I'm so excited. I get to speak with one of East Low's highest star, Vanessa Vasquez. Vanessa, how are you? Hi, I'm good. I'm excited to be on the show today. Thank you. Yeah, <laughs> no problem. It's my pleasure. <laughs> I'm so excited to talk to you, and I'm definitely going to geek out. As you know, uh, East Los High is like one of my favorite guilty pleasures. <laughs> yeah, so I hear. <laughs> so I wanted to just start with one of the questions that I ask um, everyone that comes on the show. But when did you first fall in love with acting? Ooh, I think I was um, in sixth grade. I, um, you know, it was really funny because I was a really shy kid. I was straight A, perfect little girl. I didn't want to get in trouble. My mother was a mother for a long time, so it was just kind of like me and her. And um, so I read a lot of books. And I remember in sixth grade, I I had a chance to, you know, when the teacher asks you to read a role in a certain play that you're reading. So uh, they asked me to read the part of Becky and... uh, what was it? It was one of the Huckleberry Finn's books, and uh, I don't know. I just like I fell in love with that character. I remember just being being the character, even while I was reading it. It was just something. Just I felt like little glitters of heaven fell down from the sky, <laughs> over my soul, and um, I just felt like I don't know. It was, it was just kind of like a sign, like wow, I feel like I could do this. You know, help like tell stories and um you know get get into stories like that and I don't know I I think that's just when it really started because the next year I started taking drama and um I started taking drama since like seventh grade and I just never stopped I kept I did it all through college and here I am now (laughs) yeah that's awesome you know it's funny because I, I was a thespian in high school. So um, one of the things I really enjoyed about acting was the fact that, like, you live this one life, right? But when you're acting, you get to live someone else's life. Is that something that you enjoy as well? Yeah, I do enjoy it because I feel like I learn a lot from every character that I play. You know, as human beings, I think that we all have very distinct lives that we carry. And nobody else in this universe, you know, will ever carry our story the way we do. And to be able to go into somebody else's story and somebody else's journey in life, that's just so amazing because it's just like it, it adds on to you as a human being, I think, as as an actor. And um, it's really cool. I, I like it. And I, I love being able to tell other people's stories and, you know, of course, using my instrument in that, in that way. It's kind of like giving back to the world artistically. Yeah. Um, So you studied at the Stella Adler Academy in Los Angeles. And for people that don't know, like Marlon Brando, Warren Beatty, Robert De Niro, Melanie Griffiths, Selma Hayek, these are just a few names that studied there as well. So what did you learn during your time there and what did it mean to have that honor? Oh, my God. Right before I even went, I came to L.A., the only thing I knew was that I wanted to study as Stella Adler because, you know, some of the instructors, they, they saw something in me and they helped me out a lot. And they, uh, I actually ended up getting a scholarship there. So that was like a dream come true. And to have Mark Ruffalo sign up on your scholarship letter, was just, I can't even describe it. It was, it was like the universe saying, yes, you're going in the right direction. And I was like, <laughs> yes it's happening like you know you just follow your little dreams and and then you know doors start opening up for you but at Stella Adler it was just you know when you're there you're learning so much about she was she was very much about the imagination you know and being able to create any character and be and play any anybody through using your imagination and of course there's a lot of uh voice classes and movement and, you know, everything that they incorporate, you know, into just creating a character and whether it's make, you know, have making sure that you have an accent and walking a certain way, all that stuff is, it, it's just, it was incredible. And it was a huge honor to be able to study there and, you know, follow in the great footsteps of a lot of, of American artists. Wow. That's, that does sound like an honor, and congratulations. I mean, it's really cool when you're able to 
feel like you're on the right path. Uh, and so I'm sure, as you said, like that was just um, a defining moment in your life. One of the areas I like to champion uh, is diversity in film. And so what is it like as a Latina in, in Hollywood? Um, and it, to me, from the films that I've seen that you've been in, as well as East Los High, which we'll get into in a second, you seem to really navigate uh, the system in a great way where you're able to play these great female lead roles. So like in Sorrow, you know, just being able to turn the tables on your captors and Narca, it looks like an awesome film where like you are the action star. So, you know, what is it like being a Latina in Hollywood? But then also like, how are you doing this? Like it's, it's, it's awesome to see like you're picking and choosing these great roles. You know, I, I have to say that I think it's because I pray a lot. <laughs> no, um, <laughs> I, I I feel that um, when I first got here to LA, I like I said, I didn't I didn't know much. I didn't know I had to start all over. And one thing that I realized was that I'm a, I'm really a Latina. Like Hollywood, really, you know, they want to know who you are and what you can do. And do you speak Spanish? Do you not speak Spanish? Like. <laughs> You know, and, and if you look a lat- if you are a Latina, you better look like a Latina. So I had to learn and I had to learn how to do the, the Spanish accent, you know, talk like this, like sometimes my mom likes to talk. <laughs> <laughs> or, you know, kinda talk like I'm in LA, you know, and I'm just like a little kid and some seventeen or something. <laughs> right. So all these like things I had to learn how to do and kind of uh, morph into whatever Latina that they wanted me to be. And at times you know, it was really weird because I'll, I'll go in and they're like, well, you don't look like the Latina that we were kind of had in mind. You know, I, I'm i not a voluptuous Latina. I don't think I am like Sofia Vergara, I would say, in certain <laughs> manners. Yeah. But um, I, I feel like um, I think because of that, I had to work really hard at my craft and what I can do and just being able to be confident room and know that whatever they're looking for I can also do even if I don't look the part you know what I mean so I felt like there, it was a good thing in, in a way that, that you know I have this kind of I could have this ambiguous look that I can probably be Italian or you know be from somewhere in South America or, or you know God knows what whatever they have in mind and um because my town, I, I'm able to, to do that, you know, pick up a certain um, accent and, or dialects. And, um, yeah, did I answer the question? <laughs> yeah, I think so. I mean, and then I guess another portion of it is, like, the, the female lead roles that you're, you're getting, like Narca, um, like, that's, that's rare. A lot of these roles, you know, like I said, I, I just really... I, I really work hard in, in what I do, and and I think directors see that, and other people start noticing him. And when you work with people on set, and people see you work, and they see how much you you dive into a character, then people talk and they refer, and they're like, "Hey, you you want to you need a good actress, you know?" Here, a lot of the stuff I've got, like Naka, I was referred to um, the director. He actually saw my reel, and he said, "You know what?" I love that you're very serious about your career and you don't play up so much your beauty. You know, it's, you, you're more, more focused on how you're acting. And I really respect that. And I have this role, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, that's how I got into that. Film. And the same with Sorrow. You know, Millie, the director, she saw me in a short film that I did. And she saw something in me and she said, you know, I really want you to audition for this film that I'm, it's a short film first. And then I really want to turn into a feature and I need someone, I need an actress that has a great range that could, you know, help me pull this off. And, you know, for her, this was her first film. And of course, you know, I'm, I'm also starting off in the industry. It was, it was kind of like a neat project for us to kind of, you know, sh- showcase ourselves and, um, you know, try to get ourselves out because we're both very committed to what we we're doing. So, yeah, I just think, you know, when you work hard and you really focus on what you want to do, eventually, you know, just things will start kind of falling into place. Well, I'm, I'm definitely looking forward to seeing, you know, the rest of your career as it continues to blossom. Um, but obviously, one of, one of the roles I want to focus on is 
Hulu's East Los High, and <laughs> <laughs> you guys are currently in production for season three. So one of the first questions is, how did you get involved, and what attracted you to the material? To the material. Oh my God! So okay, um, <laughs> they when they were first casting for season one, I had just got to LA and. You know, a lot of people were telling me about this casting director, Blanca Valdez. It's like, oh, you need to get with Blanca. She casts. I was like, okay, I gotta find this Blanca lady. And um, <laughs> I went to audition, and they had already auditioned um, all the main characters. And she had me come in and read for, I forgot what character it was, but long story short, I didn't get it. And I was really sad because. I was really excited. It was a show about Latinos, and it was the first ever show that, you know, I grew up watching, like, Saved by the Bell, Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, and, you know, but I never I never felt like I really saw myself. Like, I, I saw, I would watch telenovelas with my grandma and my and my aunts, but it was never the same because I didn't grow up in Mexico. I, I couldn't relate to the, any of the people in the telenovelas because they were the rich upper class of, you know, of Mexico or wherever they're from. And we didn't, I didn't grow up rich at all. <laughs> we're very poor sometimes. and But we always had love, so we were rich in love. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and um, so, yeah, it was. I just really wanted to be a part of it. You know, I, I really felt like it was going to be something great. I just had a, an amazing feeling about it. And, you know, season two came around, and um, they had me come in and read again. And... Um, I read for Camila. I didn't. I didn't even know much about the character. It was written a little bit different at first, and um, I think I, I must have went in the room to do like six readings, six auditions. Like it was about three callbacks, but the last day they had me there all day, and I auditioned with with Ray Diaz that my last day, and he is the guy that plays Nick. Um, and then you know we just we just we just got on. All of a sudden they're like, hey, so they're all, my agent called me. Like you, you want to be on the show? I was like, hell yeah! <laughs> like I, I was getting other auditions. I was getting other auditions for other TV shows, like network shows. You know, that were also blossoming. But I don't know. I, I just, I didn't care for any of that. I just really, like, my heart was set on this. And yeah, it was. It was even though the show was still kind of a baby, and it, it wasn't like it's, it's, it wasn't like really, really huge. I just felt like no, this is where I need to be. This is what feels right. And, you know, sometimes you just have to go with your gut. As you may know, I really enjoyed your performance in season two. You had uh, a heavy load that you had to carry the entire season, and we had the big reveal at the end. Um, so what do you enjoy most about playing Camilla? Because I feel like she's a really uh, challenging role, but fun at the same time. Yeah, yeah it was so much fun. You know, she's... Camila is a it's a very dynamic character, and I loved, you know, that there's comedy, and of course it gets dramatic because she's funny, and then she's got all these things going on. But I think what I love most about it was, you know, as people watch it, and I love hearing people's feedback from the show because um, a lot of people watch it, and if you know, there's like you said, the reveal's not to the end, and you're watching this girl, and just like in real life, we always see somebody that's always kind of you know, has an attitude problem or is going here and there. And, you know, as in society, we can say things like, oh, my God, that girl's such a bitch or she's such a hoe. Look at her bouncing from that guy to that girl, whatever. And we become, like, very judgy of, of people and, you know, their behavior. And then I love that at the end they reveal that she's dealing with something deeper because, you know, like – in real life, we do that to people, you know, we're, we're so quick to judge, but we don't really actually take the time to, you know, look into someone and say, hey, what is that person dealing with? Or I'm sure you can't tell what's going to happen in season three, but like I, I'm really anticipating like how they deal with that subject matter, because I think that's something that we don't usually see on TV, but like it happens in real life. Um, so yeah. I guess, can you just say at least that like... Yeah, it's it's going to be a, a great uh, a great okay. ride. <laughs> well, yeah, season three, definitely. I mean, I think what season two did was just kind of set everything up for her character and her journey and, and what she's dealing with. But definitely, there's uh, there's um, there's definitely going to be a lot of um, a lot a lot more into how families deal with these situations and also how um, how people cope with stuff like that. And, you know, just um uh, a little bit more stuff like that. I can't really say. <laughs> <much>. <laughs> um, 
<laughs> yeah, well, I'm definitely looking forward to it. It looks like you guys are family on and off set. Um, is that the case? Yeah, yeah, it is. You know, we're, we, you know, we have a lot of scenes together all the time. But, um, so when we're, it's, it's kind of like, you know, we're, we're pioneers of this first Latino, all Latino cast show. So it, it does kind of bond you in a certain, a different way that I think it would in, in another show. And you're creating a story. You're, you're, you're creating like a baby together, everybody. And so it, you're kind of like family in that sense. And plus we're always like joking around on set and we're Latino, so we can't help but be loud and, <laughs> <laughs> and be fun. So it's like a huge fiesta every day. <laughs> Man, that's awesome. All right. So Vanessa, thanks for, you know, your time and everything. How can people follow you? Um, and what's the release date on East Los Trace? East Los Tres. I don't know when the release date is, but I'm pretty sure it's in the summer sometime. Um, hopefully it's sooner than last season's, uh, So, but I'm not sure. And people can follow me. I'm on Twitter, Facebook, everything. Instagram, Vanessa Vasquez. Vanessa with two N's and two S's. I'm kind of special like that. <laughs> <laughs> well, Vanessa, thank you so much for taking the time out to come on Picture Lock. Um, congratulations with your career so far, and we're looking forward to seeing where you go in the future. Thank you so much, Kevin. Thank you for all your support and all your feedback. You're, you're amazing. Thank you so much. Awesome. Thanks. All right. Have a good night. Okay. You too. Bye.